What's up everyone, it's Ben here and I just finished my first semester at Wharton for my MBA program and it's been a wild, intense, sometimes overwhelming experience and I wanted to give you guys today a month by month breakdown into what I've just been up to over these past four to five months. Before I go into the month by month breakdown, I do wanna let you guys first know how I've been spending my time in general. Roughly speaking, for my non-sleeping hours, I've been spending around 30% of my time or so on academics, which include classes and homework, around 30% of my time socializing, 30% of my time working on Rare Liquid, and then 10% of the time on miscellaneous things like errands or going to the gym. But if I'm being really honest, I haven't been going to the gym. And that's partly because I've been so freaking busy with my MBA program, which you guys will see as I go throughout this entire video. I also need to add two notes about the breakdown that I showed you guys a bit earlier about how I spend my time. The first is that my breakdown is a little bit unusual because I'm working on Rare Liquid, not recruiting for anything. And so a lot of the time that I spent on the business, Rare Liquid is actually what a lot of my other classmates spend on recruiting. The second important note is that your days and weeks vary a ton and it can really be based on whatever you want your schedule to look like. Some days you might be focused a lot on academics, Others, you might be focused only on recruiting, and other days you might be on a weekend trip and all you're doing is socializing. Your MBA experience is really what you mold it out to be, and I have different videos that cover the various aspects of the MBA experience in a playlist, which I'll leave a link to down in the description below. All right, now let's go into the month by month breakdown, starting with August. For Wharton and probably most other MBA programs, first year students arrive in the first week of August where you're just settling into your new apartment and city. And if there's one thing I underestimated, it's how long it takes to furnish a brand new apartment. Then during the second week, there are a bunch of welcome events and it feels pretty much like orientation where you're listening to panels, learning about the academic curriculum, learning about how to use all the tech associated with the program and etc. There are about 800 of us per class at Wharton, which is a ton of people. And I still haven't met all of my classmates. And in that first few weeks, Wharton actually puts you into a lot of smaller groups in order to facilitate socialization. Everyone is put into one of four clusters, which have around 200 people each. And then you're put into one of three cohorts within that cluster, which have around 60 to 70 people each. You're also put into a Student Life Fellow or SLF group, which consists of around 20 people. And then you can also sign up for small group dinners, which is around four to six people across the entire class. Lastly, you're placed into something called a learning team, which consists of six people within your cohort that you work on a group project together for about 1.5 weeks in a management leadership and teamwork class. And this is also the team that you're gonna be working on a lot of group projects with for a lot of the core classes in fall and spring semester. So ideally, you like the people in your learning team because you're gonna be working with them a lot. And so for the month of August, I would say the energy throughout the entire campus is pretty vibrant because everyone's just trying to get to know each other. Everyone's pretty enthusiastic and excited. And it feels like you're meeting at least 25 to 75 people every single week. Now, if you're watching this video because you're interested in business school one day and you still haven't yet taken the GMAT, one resource I highly, highly recommend is Target Test Prep, also known as TTP. Studying for the GMAT was honestly one of my toughest challenges when I was considering applying to business school because there are just so many topics to study for and it can feel a bit overwhelming when you're first starting out. And so I did a lot of research into the best resources when I was studying for the GMAT and what kept popping up on Reddit and forums like GMAT Club was TTP. And what I really liked about it is that it takes a topic by topic approach, which allows you to really master each topic and be prepared for almost any question that pops up on the GMAT. Here's how it works. For both quant and verbal, TTP breaks down all of the individual topics that appear on the GMAT, and with them come lessons and practice tests ranging from easy, medium, to hard that lets you hone your skills and master each topic. TTP is a one-stop shop that covers both quant and verbal sections of the GMAT, and it's the only company on GMAT Club with a triple-digit five-star rating. I credit TTP a lot for helping me get a 750 on the GMAT, and if you wanna test out TTP for five days for just $1, feel free to check them out using my link down in the description below. All right, so next let's talk about September, which I think is a more fun month in comparison to August because you're a bit more settled in and you're also going to a lot of fun welcome events hosted by clubs and Wharton students just plan events that are a lot more fun in comparison to the campus you know, administration team. At the same time, I would also say that September feels a lot more overwhelming than August, maybe in somewhat of a good way, it's not all bad, just because of the sheer number of things that are thrown your way. 
To give you one example, there are over 100 clubs at Wharton and a lot of them are really interesting, seem really fun, and they all email you within one week. And you kind of have to filter through all of them and figure out which ones you want to join. And also if you want to join any of the boards, if you're interested in doing that. You also start your classes, which take up a lot of your time. But also if you've been out of the workforce for the past few years, then it takes some time to get used to. And plus you also have homework. And I actually go into a lot of what the MBA academic course load and classes are like in this video right here. There are at least two to three events to go to each week, which usually involves a lot of alcohol. And then you also have lunches and dinners where you're trying to get to know new people. They can be in groups or individual settings. And usually you have your WhatsApp groups just blowing up and probably you're getting somewhere around like 100 to 300 messages every single day. Now I know I left off a lot of specifics about the different events I went to and things like that. And that's actually because I made a video dedicated to the month of September in this video here. So feel free to check that out if you want a deeper dive into what that first month looked like. Let's next talk about October, which I think is a pretty big transition month in a sense because the mood around campus starts to shift a little bit. Things get a little bit more serious because about half the class, if not more, starts to really, really get focused on recruiting. For the first two weeks of October though, there are midterms and final exams. So most students are kind of just focused on that. And then in the third week of October at Wharton, there's something called Opportunity Week, where there are over a hundred plus companies or so across various different industries like banking, consulting, tech, consumer, healthcare, and more. And I didn't personally, personally go to any of these kind of recruiting events throughout Opportunity Week because I'm not recruiting, but a lot of my classmates did. And you're pretty much spending every morning to evening throughout this entire week meeting with companies and it's a lot of going to info sessions, meeting people, and it can be a little bit draining and tiresome, but also great opportunity, hence why they call it Opportunity Week, for you to you know, really get your foot in, in the door for a lot of companies and get that recruiting process going. And so in comparison to August and September where you're kind of just free and mindlessly kind of having fun. In October, you're reminded, oh wait, I just took out $200,000 in loans or I will over the next two years. And so I really need to get that job. That's the main reason I came to MBA school. And a lot of times you might not even be sure yet because it's only been a few months and you're already recruiting for jobs, right? And some people are not really sure what they want to recruit for, but all these opportunities are coming your way. And so you're doing a lot of introspection, making decisions when maybe you're not ready about what industry to go into and you're starting to prep, meeting companies, et cetera, et cetera. And even if you get a scholarship or if you're sponsored and you don't need to worry about get, um, paying for your MBA, you still need that summer internship, right? So a lot of the, I'd say the main majority of the entire class starts to focus on recruiting, things to get, things get a little bit more serious. And that's why October, I would say, is a pretty big transition month. But still, I would call all of this pretty light recruiting and then things get a lot more serious in the month of November. November hits especially hard for bankers and consultants because a lot of the companies in banking and consulting start to host a lot of events and also actually start to cut candidates. Also for banking, especially if you're interested on the West Coast, Banking pretty much wraps up their recruiting process by the end of November. And so a lot of my friends who are recruiting for the West Coast, they were at a mad scramble. And then just overall, I saw a lot of my friends and classmates just wearing suits pretty much almost every day for this entire month because they had to meet people for, for coffee chats, go to info sessions, go to company dinners, things like that. And so November starts to get a starts to become a pretty intense month for recruiting. And so as a result of this, a lot of the conversations that you start to have during lunch or dinners is actually about recruiting, which is a different vibe than August and September where things are just really, um, not really always about recruiting. And also people tend to start getting a little bit more tired because they might have a lot of recruiting events and preparation that they're doing. And so some people are not as free to hang out. And so it's just really a different vibe. People are on various different schedules depending on what they're recruiting for. I do want to add though that there still are a lot of fun activities that are happening throughout the month of November or pretty much just any month of your MBA program. There still are weekend trips that people are planning, a lot of club events to go to, dinners and lunches that are constantly being planned with small groups and larger groups. And there's also in November, right before Thanksgiving, a really major event to uh, where, which is a trip to Columbia that hundreds of Wharton students go to. The last notable and kind of funny thing about November is something called the turkey drop. And this is where 
Because you're now in your MBA program for a few months, I think some people find that they were with a significant other, but now they have all these other options. And they're like, whoa, maybe this significant other is not the right person for me. And I'm about to see my family for Thanksgiving. And there's a turkey drop where you decide to drop your significant other. Now, personally, I haven't actually seen a lot of couples actually break up um, because of Thanksgiving. I know it's a thing, but maybe I'm just not in the loop enough with like what's happening with people's dating lives. Uh, but anyway, just something I wanted to point out throughout all MBA programs, this is a pretty common phenomenon and something a little bit uh, kind of funny that I thought that I'd share. All right, so next, let's talk about the month of December, which is pretty much a continuation of November, but you add in finals and then also a bunch of holiday events, which are pretty fun. Now, personally, I went to a few club holiday dinners. I also went to a Lauder holiday party, which is for my dual degree program that I'm in. And then I went to the PEVC Gala, which was honestly one of the best events of the semester because I think it's one of the events that spends the most money. And I don't know why they have such a large budget, but it was pretty fun. You're only on campus for around two to three weeks in December. And after finals, everyone kind of goes their separate ways. Uh, a lot of people go to see their family and old friends for Christmas. They, so they go back to their hometowns or cities. And then I think a lot of people, you know, even though there are a lot of trips that are planned in December that you can go to with your classmates, feels like most people do also want to just take that time away from the overall MBA experience, which is intense fun, wild, overwhelming, um, as we've kind of gone through over this, uh, throughout this entire video. And it's nice to just have, you know, four to five weeks where you can just relax and not have to worry about anything MBA related. That is, of course, unless you're recruiting for banking or consulting, because in the first two weeks of January is when you have pretty much all your interviews. And so you're really preparing a lot for the first few weeks of your break, just prepping for interviews, doing mock interviews, and, you know, all of that stuff that comes with recruiting. And so that's my recap for my first semester at Wharton. And I would imagine that a lot of MBA programs have a similar shift where the first few months of the semester is kind of just focused on having fun. The energy is vibrant. And then throughout the next few or latter half of the semester, a lot of focus is on recruiting. Things get a little bit more serious and people just have really, really intense, busy schedules. I also hear though that in the spring where a lot of people have now gotten their jobs, people are focused on developing friendships, the energy starts to kind of revamp and people will start to just wanting to focus on having fun again. That is until everyone gets their souls sucked away in summer where they're working in their corporate jobs and whatnot. I'm just kidding, of course, but I do hear that, you know, um, the spring is supposed to be a little bit more exciting and fun. And so I will definitely be making videos about that in the coming months. Now, before I let you guys go, I wanted to let you know that I'm building out a how to get into MBA course, which I've been working really, really hard on. And I'm giving out 50% discounts for the people who sign up early using my Google form link down in the description below. Second, also wanted to remind you guys about Target Test Prep, a great resource if you're studying for the GMAT. And lastly, you're gonna see a video in the next screen about the good, the bad, and the ugly truths about my first semester at Wharton. If you're interested, feel free to check out that video. With that said, thank you all so much for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks so much and peace out.